only how to triumph My God will never fail My God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus, every morning. I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends Yes, I know how the story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord.
strong in the Lord by the power of His might. The enemy's defeated. I've got victory in my life. I'm strong in the Lord by the power of His might. Rejoicing with Jesus and walking in light. If my God is for me, who can be against me? I'm destined for greatness. My God is my light. No weapon form against me will prosper. Cause I got His word. God in my life, I'll say what God says. 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 I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the Lord by the power of His mind. The enemy's defeated. I've got victory in my life. I'm strong in the Lord by the power of His mind. Rejoicing with Jesus and walking in life. If my God is for me, who can be against me? I'm destined for greatness. My God is my life. My weapon formed against me will prosper. Cause my God is word. It's God in my life. I say what God says. I say what God says. I say what God says. Targets, my mind and my thoughts With negative doubts about who I am You try to tell me this, try to tell me that I simply cast it down and it's missing from my mind I say what God says I say what God says On a rock with a song in my heart He's filled me with faith Filled me with love and the enemy starts telling me All sorts of lies I say what God says 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 I say what God says
That wasn't a trumpet sound, so we're, we're not leaving just yet. Praise the Lord. Father, we just magnify you. We glorify We thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. How great is our God? How awesome is our God? And Father, we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, please go and say hello to someone. We'll be back in a few moments. Praise God. Right, if you're visiting here with us for the first time, we'd just like to welcome you. We have some, uh, a couple of visitors. Uh, my daughter passed me a note, and I have no idea where it is. So if you are brand new here, praise God. Uh, welcome to Rama Family Church. Ah, Chris, Michael, and Cheryl. Welcome. And we have a, uh, a Louis Alexander Maguire was born on 4.53 a.m., 7 pound 5 ounces on Thursday. So that is Paige's and Robbie's Bubba. So that's super cool, super cool. Excellent. All right, we have one birthday this week, and it comes on a Saturday, and it's Richard Lane. <laughs> Happy birthday, Uncle Richie. Fantastic. Any other birthdays? No, no birthdays? All right, that's okay. That's all good. Excellent. All right, so what do we got coming up? We've got our prayer meetings, uh, praise the Lord, at 7 p.m. Wednesday uh, and 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Now, don't forget, from the 13th of um, December onwards is our holiday program, which means that all the midweek uh, meetings uh, finish. And so there won't be a, um, a Wednesday night prayer meetings from there on in. Um, and things are going to change next year. Praise the Lord. And so uh, that's going to be good. We're still going to pray. We're definitely still to pray. This, this house is called to pray. Praise the Lord. We're, if anybody, if, if I encourage you to pray, then I'm doing my job. And so uh, praise the Lord. Get to a prayer meeting Sundays, 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, we've only got a couple of prayer meetings left, all right, so uh, for the Wednesday night ones. Uh, from the 13th onwards, though, the Sunday morning ones, will, um, there won't be a, anyone leading the prayer meeting as such. But the prayer room will be open, okay? So if you want to come in and pray, uh, we did that last year, and there was a number of guys uh, and ladies that wanted to come in and pray in the morning, then please do so. We're not going to close the prayer room for anyone who wants to come in and, and seek the Lord. That's, praise the Lord, that's, that's awesome. Excellent, all right. Uh, youth, Lydia.
Good morning. <laughs> it's yeah, it's morning. Um, yeah, we've we've had a pretty great year actually. Yeah, we've brought back our insight nights, and I think I think our um, not yet believers are really enjoying them, and they're finding them really interesting. So that's always encouraging. <laughs> Um, this Friday we'll be here, 6 o'clock, we're doing another rehearsal for Project Cucumber 2.0, so please get to the Christmas service and see us and our amazing, I can't say the word, haha. <laughs> it's full of mystery, our youth, full of mystery. All right, excellent. Okay, uh, what's happening tonight? We don't have our normal morning uh, evening service. Sorry, we won't have our normal evening service here at 6 p.m. We are we've got a combined prayer meeting with Elam Church down at uh, Elam, and so that starts at 6:30 and goes through to 8 o'clock. Um, there's going to be a little bit of fellowship time. It's the last one for the year. Um, we've been blessed in the city to come together and pray. Uh, it's been excellent, excellent time, and uh, it's quite rare for churches to get together and pray. Um, uh, across all sorts of denominations, we kind of the barriers are coming down, which is an exciting time because God is He's building us in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So, uh, praise God, get along, be part of that. Don't miss the don't miss the bus. Be part of the, what what God is doing in the in our city. And so uh, we're going to be at Elam tonight, six thirty to eight p.m. And there are some scones afterwards. Why is that the most exciting part of the uh, the notice? Here? My goodness. All right. Uh, We've got a Christmas dinner coming up on the 6th of December. All right. So that's uh, fast approaching, which is next week. All right. So this this is our last fellowship meal for 2020. Um, And we're going to go out with uh, 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 in victory. Praise the Lord. And um, so uh, we've got um, lots of of delicious goodies that's going to be here. Um, and so please come along with that. Bring family, bring friends. It's, it's open for, for everybody to get together and to, uh, have some fellowship time. And bring your best Christmas kai, okay? So um, that'll be excellent. Fantastic. All right. What else is coming up? All right, the 20th of December uh, is our Christmas service, okay? Um, we, our, our item list is full. So if you, if you wanted to get in... Um, you may have to persuade me with, I don't know, cheesecake or something like that. Um, so uh, if, you, if you want to get in, then please come and see me. But uh, we, we do have lots and lots of items, um, which is really super cool. So the 20th of December is our Christmas service. It's only a morning service, and we'll be down here. And it's not going to be a, a preacher as such. We're going to have a whole bunch of items, uh, which we'll enjoy. And so, so please invite family and friends uh, to come along to that, um, and it's going to be an excellent time. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, we're heading into the new year, so I thought we'd, we'd start advertising this. Uh, the 3rd of February is Open Heaven. Now, um, la- the, earlier this year, we had an Open Heaven where it was a combined uh, prayer meeting um, at Elam. Um, and uh, uh, I think Pastor Don James from Church Unlimited said that it was the largest prayer meeting that's been in the city for 25 years. And um, it, was, it, was a, it was a really awesome, awesome time. Um, and so Open Heaven is a prayer meeting where the, the organizers are trying to sync them. Um, one here in Whangarei, one in Auckland, one in Wellington, and one in Christchurch. And so there's going to be, in the, in the major cities, we're going to be praying uh, at the same time. And so uh, the 3rd of, fe- uh, of February is a Wednesday night. Uh, it's going to be down at um, 7 o'clock down at Elam. Uh, and we're going to be uh, praying together as a, as a nation. And so praise God, that's an that's exciting time. So Please be prepared for that. Uh, also on the 7th of Feb is our Preach at the Beach. Yeah. Preach at the Beach. And uh, we usually do baptisms as well. We've just had a baptism service recently, which was awesome. But if you missed out and you want to be baptized, please come and see me and put your name down, and we'll make sure it happens. We just happen to have a beach, uh, uh, have some water there, so we can... Dunk everybody. So that'll be awesome. So uh, please come and see me if you want to be part of that. Amen. Excellent. All right. It's time for our tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. All right. uh, If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11.
All right, Proverbs 11, and it reads, come in at verse 24. Proverbs 11 and verse 24. There is one who scatters seed, or there is one who scatters, yet increases more. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than it is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. Praise the Lord. I'll just read that again. So this is Proverbs 11 verses 24. There is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than what is right. But it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. Praise the Lord. So if you've got your tithes and offerings, we're going to pray together. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to give. You're awesome in this place. And Father, we just uh, uh, thank you for this time that we're, we are, are scattering seed. We're sowing seed. And Father, I thank you for all the sowers in this house. I thank you for increase. I speak increase into their homes, into their finances. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thanks, team. Excellent. I think I told this, um, this joke. I think I told this joke before. A, uh, a new pastor in a, um, I think in a town in, in, in Australia, big, uh, opened his, uh, took over a church, and so to be responsible as far as uh, um, he wanted to go and visit his uh, some of his parishioners, and uh, he knocks on the door of this one person's house, and uh, no one answered the door, and so he, he knew that there was there, the car was in the driveway. Um, and uh, he, he knew that somebody might, might, might have been home or must have been home. So he knocked on the door and he waited. So he leaves a little note on the door. And it was um, Revelations 3 verses 20, which says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and open it, then I will come in and I will dine with him. So he leaves that, leaves that note there on the, on, on the doorway. And so the, the, the pastor comes into, into the church in the, on Sunday morning. He looks out and he sees the parish walking in. And praise God, they, they made it to church. Excellent. And there's a little, little note left in the tithes and offerings bucket. And he opens it, and it's Genesis 3.10. It says, I heard your voice in the garden. I was naked, so I hid. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I thought that was great. Excellent. All right, we'll have the worship team back. Praise God. And um, we will send out the King's Kids and Nursery. I think Nursery will be a, a mother's room. So King's Kids are from two years to five? Oh, there aren't any. Okay, forget about it. <laughs> Where are all the kids? <laughs> and then after worship, we'll send out the, um, uh, the WWW guys. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands is free my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all alone oh praise the
break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Oh, chamber death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the
You walk on the waters. You speak to the sea. You stand in the fire beside me. You roar like a lion. You bled as the lamb. You carry my healing in your hands. God, you walk on the waters. You speak to the sea. You stand in the fire beside me. You roar like a lion. You bled as the lamb.
and I will live for you. And I will live. And I will live. Let's just lift our hands before the Lord this morning. Father, we magnify, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence here with us this morning. Come and move with us. Move among us. Hallelujah. Thank you for the price that was paid, that we are now the temples of the, the Holy One. The Holy One dwells on the inside of each of us. You are a holy temple. Your body is holy. It belongs to the Lord. Your spirit man is holy. It belongs to the Lord. And Father, we just praise you. We magnify you. Come and dwell with us, Lord. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. And we thank you as we break open the bread of life. As we get into your word together, Lord, I thank you for your grace. Go before us. Your mercy is to go before us. Your Holy Spirit, Spirit of revelation and understanding, go before us. And we thank you, Lord, that we lead to here changed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, family. All right, kids, have an awesome time this morning. We'll release you now. The www. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone watched the Northland game? Well, the first half was actually pretty exciting. <laughs> Anyone watched the, uh, the Argies? Oh, I better not tell you what happened then. 38 nil. There we go. <laughs> awesome game, awesome game. 
Excellent. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're uh, continuing on our series of Kingdom Weaponry Part 5. Kingdom Weaponry Part 5. Uh, if you are brand new this morning and you've just come in here, we're going through a series. Um, don't worry too much though. I'll, I'll, we do a little bit of a recap uh, just to bring everybody up to speed. So our base scripture that we start in, we are a word church. So if you need any Bibles, our ushers are ready to hand them out. If you need one, you can borrow one. Uh, base scripture for uh, the series is 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. So if you can turn with me now. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about kingdom weaponry, kingdom weapons. All right, so come in at 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I'll just read it to you from the old King James, a different translation. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, they're not of this world. We don't wage war according to the weapons of this world. We don't pay back with vengeance or, or, or revenge anybody. Our war is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. So our warfare is different. We're on a higher level. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So that's when we do revenge. We revenge out the, the disobedience, all right? So the, the strongholds in our minds, we take them captive and we make them bow their knee to Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so there are some, what we've been learning is that there are some weapons made available to us and they're powerful if we know how to use them. So we are learning how to use them, and they will bring about change within your physical or even in your sense realm. You use these spiritual weapons, you get into uh, 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 the spiritual dimension, and you learn how to use these weapons of warfare, they can bring change to your physical or sense realm. It's not just some sort of hairy-fairy kind of thing where it doesn't change anything here. That is the origin of change. That's where the origin of everything is, is in the spirit realm. And it will bring change to your physical or your sense realm. I want to show you this really cool example here um, uh, in 2 Kings 3. 2 Kings 3. About our weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. So 2 Kings 3. I'm coming at verse 26. Second Kings 3 and verse 26. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. I'll just bring you up to speed here. Uh, the Moabites have gone to um, uh, battle with Israel. They're at war with Israel. Um, and so they're losing. The, the Moabites are losing. So when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. And so the king of Moab, he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. Killed him. A sacrifice. Human sacrifice. And, and it says here in the scriptures, and there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. There was great indignation against Israel, so they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now, the Amplified says this, there was great wrath against Israel. There was a great wrath against Israel. Uh, the New Living Translation says there was great anger against Israel. The NIV says this, there was a great fury against Israel. Now, uh, 
people were trying to figure the scripture out for uh, centuries. And so there, you get all sorts of common kind of commentaries on this. And here is one that I think is quite, um, quite funny. Um, it says that Israel came up against Moab and they were so appalled by what they saw that they kind of put their swords down and went home. So, oh, that's disgusting. Let's not fight these guys anymore. And that, that to me doesn't make sense. And so I, I, I've heard um, Pastor Ed Galf many years ago, we, we had a combined service for that come alive a um, number of years ago. And he says that the king of Moab, the Moab here, there was something greater at work. The king of Moab accessed a spiritual law. He accessed a spiritual law. The law is this, greater the sacrifice, greater the release of spiritual power. Greater the sacrifice, greater the release of spiritual power. And so the dark side, if you will, the side that, uh, you know, there is a dark, there is the enemy. We're going to be talking about him today. There is the enemy, the dark forces of evil and the devil and the demons and, and all that that is against God and his gospel. They too have access to spiritual powers. They have access to spiritual powers. Now I shared this um, a couple of months ago, I believe. Uh, I shared a testimony I think we might have been in lockdown about John, with John Ramirez. John Ramirez was a, he was a high priest in the occult, so he was a high priest as far as satanic worship goes. Uh, he called Satan his father, and uh, he, the the devil was talking talking to him. Um, and so uh, he he said he had access to spiritual power. He said whenever there were riots and stuff, he would he would send out spirits of division, and and discord. And so he had uh, access to this kind of spiritual power. But he became born again. Praise the Lord. John Ramirez came, became born again. And he had, he's, he's out sharing the gospel to, to the believers, saying, you don't realize the, the, the weapons that you actually have. Greater is he that is on the inside of you than he that is within the world. And so uh, we kind of, I asked the question, well, how, does, how did man know how to do this kind of stuff? How did man have access to to witchcraft and sorcery. Some people don't believe it exists. Uh, the Bible talks about it, that there are sorcerers and, and people that commit, commit witchcraft and that kind of thing. In fact, the Lord says that it's an abomination to him. He says, you don't practice sorcery and witchcraft. It's an abomination to me. And so how do men know this? And uh, it wasn't until I've, I've read um, the book of Enoch. Uh, I've shared, shared with this before, but the, the Bible is 66 books written by uh, 40 authors. But once upon a time, it was 100 books. There was 100 books. And the book of Enoch was written in here until um, a council got together and decided to um, slim, I guess, streamline the Bible and take out some of the ones that kind of maybe they didn't understand. But the Enoch was um, seventh in line from Adam. So you've got Adam who was created, the first man on, on the planet. And so seventh generation down, you find Enoch. Enoch was Noah's grandfather. Now, the Bible talks about Enoch. And in fact, the Bible uh, refers to the book of Enoch. I think in um, Peter, in the letter that Peter wrote, he refers back to the, uh, to the book of Enoch. Now, this is what it says about Enoch. It says that Enoch walked with God the days of his life, and then he was no more. God just kind of, he just walked off with God. No death, no kind of whirlwind or anything. He just, see you later. <laughs> I'm out of here. So that, that's, that's quite an awesome testimony. And so uh, I, when I, I, I got intrigued about Enoch, so I went out and sourced the book of Enoch and I read it. Now in the book of Enoch, it talks about, uh, there's 124 chapters, I believe, and the, and the first 60 chapters talks about um, uh, stuff that, that's not in the Bible, but the second 60 is, a, is kind of like another reference to Noah's flood. Um, so the first 60 chapters, though, it talks about that the, how the angels from heaven fell and then they began to commune with women and with men and uh, the, the fallen angels um, uh, had intercourse with, with women and they gave birth to giants and the giants had to be eradicated uh, but the angels what the angels did also is that they taught men how to make weapons taught them how to make swords and that kind of thing and they also taught them sorcery, witchcraft and divination and so this is where the, uh, uh, I believe that the origin is and so witchcraft, sorcery, and divination, that's how it kind of came, to about, uh, came about. And it had to have come from somewhere. And so to me, it kind of makes sense. 
And so what we see here now is that uh, uh, the king of Moab took the heir to his throne. This is serious stuff. For him to be a uh, for him to be a successful king, he must have a successor, and that was his son. But he saw that he was about to lose the kingdom, so he took his eldest son and offered him as a burnt sacrifice to their god Shamosh, the Moabite god. The word Shamosh is translated the destroyer. The destroyer, and there was a release of spiritual power. <laughs> Came out. Came out against Israel. There was a release of spiritual power. Now, I want you to liken this to the scripture here. God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the release of spiritual power. Could you imagine the the amount of spiritual power released at a sacrifice so great. A sinless man. A, a God man. God who became man. The immense power that was released was so intense it shook the world. There was earthquakes. Every time, and this is what I believe, every time someone receives Jesus into their heart, a, a wrath comes out against the forces of darkness. A fury comes out. Whenever anyone says, Jesus, I believe. Praise God. See what happens. Could, could you imagine the, uh, the amount of powers required that where an old man, the spirit man of a person dies and a new man is resurrected? A soul that was destined to go to hell. All of a sudden there's a spiritual power intervenes and, they, and they're, they're, they're redeemed from that. Pulled us up out of the miry clay and set our feet upon the rock powerful man it's powerful and so we have this uh, 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 have this law the spiritual law where greater the sacrifice greater the release of spiritual power praise the Lord praise the Lord are you with me excellent alright here are some key understandings that we've covered so far Is firstly number one is that we are in a war we are in a war um, some people don't kind of realize it but there is an enemy which is number two we have an enemy and he wages warfare against the gospel and anyone that believes number three is within our munitions within our munitions we have powerful kingdom weaponry we have powerful kingdom weaponry weaponry so number one the kingdom weapons that we've looked at so far is the word of god Number one is the Word of God, which is the Logos, the belt of truth. Holds all the armor together. Logos is the written Word of God, which is this. It holds all the armor together. So if you can imagine that as a belt. <laughs> holds everything together. Uh, and secondly is Rhema, which is the sword of the Spirit. And a believer who uses the revelated Word in situations to bring about change is a fierce warrior. Anyone who has the Word on the inside of them, that's made them a part of themselves, is a powerful person, man powerful person and so that's number one is the word of God kingdom weapons and number two is praise praise we looked at that last time praise establishes your faith it calls those things that be not as though they were uh, it magnifies the Lord it brings God into your situation when, when you're facing a, some sort of trauma or you're facing some sort of crisis in your life and you decide to just kind of push it aside a bit and you decide to lift your hands and just praise God that's a powerful, powerful thing. Get your eyes off the situation and eyes on Him. And you realize, man, my God is so much more bigger than this. Father, I thank you that you come and you intervene on my behalf. The battle becomes the Lord's. Praise God. So praise brings God into the situation. Amen? Excellent. All right, so we're just going to, there's lots more weapons we want to cover in this series, but I thought we'd take a break from uh, looking at some weapons today. And we're going to look at key understanding number two, which is that we have an enemy. We have an enemy. Now, uh, you have to understand or hear me. I'm not out to glorify him or his uh, kingdom by any means. We don't want to get hung up about the forces of darkness, as some people do. Um, but we need to be aware of some things. 
So if you've got your Bibles, let's have a look at uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. God, excellent. Second Corinthians 2 and verse 11 reads, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now that word devices there in the Greek word in the Greek is the word noima, N-O-E-M-A, noima. And it means perception, the intellect, the disposition. It denotes a thought which is thought out. A thought which is thought out. So we are not ignorant that the devil has a strategy and it is well thought out, especially pertaining to us. He's a well thought out strategy. Now that word Satan there in the Greek is the word Satanas. Satanas. Satan, Satanas. And it means the accuser, the adversary. And the word in the Hebrew is the word sotan, which is spelled Satan, sotan. And it means an opponent, arch enemy of good, the adversary, the accuser, someone who accuses the brethren, someone who brings a legal accusation against. This is key. We'll come back to this. Someone who brings a legal accusation against. Now, uh, I've been look, listening to Rick Renner about this subject here, and, and uh, let's just have a look at this scripture here in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter 5, verse 8, talking about the enemy, the devil, Satan. Right, 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, it reads, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. He walks around like he is one. Seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now that word, uh, be vigilant, be vigilant, it means uh, it's not to give him any kind of credit as such, but it's take preventative action. Take preventative action. The word adversary is the word which I mentioned before, is bringing a legal brief or an accusation against you. The devil approaches God on some things concerning you. It says in the Scriptures in the New Testament that your words uh, can condemn you. Your words can either justify or it can condemn you. And so, for instance, if you are believing God for something, if you're going, Father, I just thank you that I am healed in Jesus' name. Uh, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. That my, my lower back is, 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 is free from pain. Praise God. And then uh, half an hour later, you go, oh, my back is so sore, I don't think it's ever going to get better. The devil, by your words, he will condemn you. He will take what you have just said, bring a legal case against God, and says, you can't heal them because of this. Someone is building a file. So we need to be vigilant, not to give him any undue credit, but take preventative action. Don't give him any ground. 1 Peter 5 verse 8, this is from the RIV. RIV. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because the devil, like a prosecuting attorney, is searching for some loophole in your life. Some place of spiritual violation where you have broken a spiritual law, and like a prosecuting attorney, he will try to use that evidence to prosecute you and take you down interesting stuff see what we need to understand about the devil is that he hates the gospel he hates us he wages warfare against us therefore if we're under attack by forces of darkness we need to turn our eyes to the scriptures understand what right the devil has and the weapons 
we have in our munitions to use against them. All right, turn with me to John 10, verses 10. John 10, verses 10. Okay, John 10 verses 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So the, the letters here are written in red. So this is obviously whom is speaking. Jesus. So Jesus says this, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And so there are three things that are on the, the devil's agenda. To steal, to kill, to destroy. To steal, to kill, to destroy. Now the thief obviously is the enemy, it's the devil. Once upon a time his name was Lucifer, which means morning star. Lucifer means the morning star. Uh, I think in Rick Renner's studies, um, he was adorned in all types of jewels. And um, his purpose was he was head musician in heaven. Um, but obviously he thought he could do a better job than God. So he led a revolt. But uh, it was over like that. He says, like lightning, I saw Satan fall from the heavens. It was finished. It wasn't like some sort of carried out <laughs> war as if he had a chance. He was against God. It's quite interesting. When Jesus comes back, this is how he's going to defeat the adversary. It's like with a snuff. <laughs> he lands on, lands on earth and <laughs> kills the, uh, the Antichrist and, and the devil. <laughs> it's like they are so kind of... Mm, we kind of build the, the devil up like... Whoa, and get kind of caught up like he's so powerful. He really isn't. He pretends he is. He hides around the corner thinking he's uh, a, 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 a lion. It's just a weed. And so the thief does not come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, uh, I like what Tom Engel says about this, um, the scripture here. To steal is like uh, a pickpocket. So he, like, he, he likes to steal, and so he, he'll steal something from out of your pocket. Uh, to kill is like um, you, you've just been mugged. A group of people uh, attack you, you've been mugged, they've got a bat, and they beat you, and they, then they take all your belongings and leave you for dead. Now, to destroy means that as you, your family, and, any, and, and to separate you from God altogether. And what we see here is, is the devil's mode of operation here. This is how he attacks and how he strikes. Now the word the devil in the Greek means the one who continually strikes and strikes and strikes and he keeps going until he penetrates. It's like he hammers and hammers and hammers and hammers and hammers until he breaks through. For instance, if someone gets a, diagnosed with a... Um, with some sort of illness and you know you're, you're fighting against it he'll keep on going he goes you're going to you're going to die you're going to die you're going to die it's incurable it's not going to work it's not going to work your faith ain't going to work these medicines ain't going to work continue 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 until it penetrates your mind until you begin to believe it then that's when he has you So the devil is the word diabolos. That's his mode of operation. One who continually strikes until he breaks through and penetrates your mind. Now here's a, here's a good example. Uh, here's the steel stage. 
For instance, if you get a sniffle, if you get a runny nose, for instance, it's not, not a big deal. It's a sniffle. But instead of dealing with the sniffle, we tolerate it. We say, oh, it's okay. It's not so bad. We tolerate it. But he's stolen something from you. And this is what we kind of do. We ignore it, believing it's just an act of faith. Oh, it's nothing. Don't even worry about it. That's okay. Got it sorted. And so we kind of brush it under the carpet. We can lift it up and brush it under the carpet. And, it, and it, we, just, we just tolerate the sniffle. This is the kill stage. It progresses maybe a, an infection in the lungs or even worse. It becomes possibly even life-threatening. Life-threatening. This is the kill stage. Now, we didn't deal with it at the, at the steal stage. It's progressed now to the kill stage. And when it comes to the destroy stage, it means we begin to question God. Had, and we begin to hear voices and, and questions like, has God indeed said this? See, the ultimate goal of the devil on your life or any believer's life is to separate you from him. It's to separate you from him. Now, I'm just going to paraphrase a story. I heard this in uh, the book Wild at Heart by John Eldridge, but he was quoting another book. It's just a little uh, a demonstration. It says, A demon enters into the devil's chambers and says, My Lord, two believers died in a car crash today. And the devil says, Well, that isn't good news to us. Another enters the chambers, a demon to the devil. And he says, My Lord, a believer has left the earth today. He died of old age. We don't have to worry about him anymore. That is not good news to me, says the devil. Another demon enters the chamber and says, My Lord, a believer turned away from his faith and left the church. The devil jumped in delight and danced with the demons all night long. The devil comes not, not to do anything except to steal, to kill, to destroy. To steal, to kill, to destroy. And so how our approach, we, are, we, we, we can't be ignorant of his devices. We can't kind of be tolerant of just the little things, whether it be a sniffle or a, a little sickness. So our approach to his wiles or to his devices or to his strategies is to confront and battle at the steel stage. We start sniffling. All right, here we go. Get into, the, get into your, your prayer, prayer closet and go, I rebuke you, sickness. I, I just command you right now that I am the healed. I am the redeemed. I am greatly favored. I am highly favored. I am greatly blessed and I'm deeply loved. And I know by your word that I am the healed. And I command you, nose, to clear up in Jesus' name. It's not, an, it's not ignoring it. It's not sweeping it under the carpet. It's a confrontation. You're turning around and you're conf confronting it. No, I'm not receiving this today. <laughs> you battle it at the steel stage. Don't tolerate any symptoms. Oh, my shoulder's a bit... bit uh, right, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus over the shoulder right now. In pain, I command you to leave. Listen to Andrew Womack. He said he was walking up the stairs one time and he says he could hear himself walking up the stairs. <laughs> Creak and crackling and, and that kind of stuff. He goes, what is going on here? Now he's in his, I'm not sure how old he is, maybe in his 60s, possibly 70s. And he's, he began to, it, and it, like for, for many of us, we kind of just tolerate it and think it's okay. It's just part of old age. We've got to start addressing some of these, these strongholds that we kind of just accept that's just the way life is. We can't just accept, oh, that's just the way life is. We just get old and our bones begin to creak. So he rebuked it at the steel stage. He goes, you know what, body, you are going to be working fine. And he said he walked up and down those stairs 10 times until his body stopped. Are you saying that's possible? Uh, absolutely. 
you stop him at the steal stage. Stop him at the steal stage. So we don't tolerate any symptoms. You're meant to be at the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is where God resides. Do you know how many years it took for uh, Solomon to build the temple? David had to do many years of preparation before then. He even planted trees at the beginning of its structure, uh, construction. So then by the time they actually finished the walls and that, that, there was wood there to be made for the roof. Years and years and years and years and years. And everything was specific. Even the, the Ark of the Covenant was specified. And he says, but I'm going to dwell in a temple made with my hands. That I made. Not with man's hands. Not this, this temple, this wooden box covered in gold and precious jewels. I want to dwell in the temple made with my hands. And do you think where God is, do you think there's going to be any kind of sickness tolerance or a sin tolerance? Now, this is, that's just a, 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 an example of... of but we, we can't even tolerate things like those 50-cent sins. Those 50-cent sins, those sins that, well, it's not really sin because everybody does it. If you're at work, for instance, and some people just grab a couple of rolls of toilet paper to take home, and, you know, that's just a done thing to do. It's just, it's just the way it, it, it kind of happens at work. The, the, the boss knows about it. He kind of doesn't think it's okay, but it, it, it's, the boss knows about it. That's a loophole. The devil's building a case against you. You can't bless this because of this. They are thieves. We need to stop him at the steel stage. At the steel stage. Turn with me to Colossians 2 and verse 13. Colossians 2 and verse 13. Excellent. Colossians 2 and verse 13, and it reads, And you, being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. Now this is you, B.C. Who can remember you before Christ? <laughs> Who was raised in the church here? Anybody who kind of raised from birth, their parents took, kind of took them to church? Okay, a number of us. So you guys probably struggle to kind of understand what does B.C. mean? Like before Christ, your life before Jesus came. But I distinctly remember Barry B.C. Barry B.C. was a sorry sight. He laid in the gutter after parties, drunk, and slobbering on himself. <laughs> Walking home, stumbling home, two, three in the morning. Morals all over the place. Didn't know which way was up. Didn't know how to respond. Didn't know how to deal with crisis. Ran from everything. Built up walls on, on, on his heart, that kind of stuff. So this is talking about Barry B.C. here. And you being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. But something changed when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. It says, He has made alive together with Him. When you receive Jesus as, as Lord and Savior for the first time, He takes all the deadness in us and makes you alive. He is made alive together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. Oh, praise God. Some people just can't grapple with this. But you don't understand all the things I've done wrong. You don't understand what kind of person. You don't know me. I 
right. I, I don't know you. But God knows you. He created you. In fact, He knows you better than you know yourself. In fact, He knew you as you were being formed in your mother's womb. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew who you were. I created you. The numbers of the hairs on your head, I know them. The, number, the hairs on your head, they are numbered. I hold your breath in the palm of my hand. I know you. I see all things. And all those wrongs that have been committed, I can take away. Amen. He has forgiven all your trespasses, all your sins, all your wrongdoing, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. We, you, were, you were deserved, we deserve to go to hell. You were so unclean before Jesus that there is no way heaven would accept us. We have fallen short of the glory of God. There is no way but on our own would anyone ever get to heaven? I've heard this many times. People say, well, I'm a good person. Well, that person's a good person. Do they go to hell? Yeah. Our righteousness is, not, is like filthy rags. We stood no chance. That's why he had to come. God came to us. We can't get to him. So God came to us. Praise God. That's, that's good news. And he took everything that was contrary to us to getting to heaven. He took everything. Everything that's stopping you from get, entering into heaven's gates, I'm going to take that all away. The handwriting of requirements that was against us, that was contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way and having nailed it to the cross. On his own body. Verse 15, having disarmed the principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. He's disarmed principalities and powers. He has no right in your life. As far as before Christ goes, he has, he has every right. Out there in the world, they are destined for hell. And unless we do something about it, they're going there. But concerning your life, he has disarmed principalities and powers. He may look like he can have lots of power and control and that kind of stuff. But Jesus came and he's disarmed him. He goes, you, have, you don't even have a place here. Get behind, this is what Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You have no place here. He has no right anywhere on you. He will lie or even make you try to make you question. He will look for a loophole, but give him nothing. Ephesians 4 verses 27, write this down. Don't, don't have to turn there. It says, give no place to the devil nor give no place to the devil. Don't even give him a foothold. Give no place to the devil. Are you with me? Now, one of my favorite instances in the, in the Bible is um, Israel was on, the, on, a, a ma on a mass exodus from Egypt. God had came in and delivered Israel out of, out of Egypt, and they're on the march. And they're heading towards the, the land of Moab. And so the Moab king at the time, his name was Balak. And so Balak uh, knows that, that uh, Israel is heading his direction, and they're destroying nations wherever they go. There is a, a, a living God that goes out before them. Pillar of cloud during the day, like a mass, mass tornado, and a pillar of fire at night. And so everyone's in fear. Israel's coming our way. We are done for. 
And so then Balak, the Moabite king, they seem to be into witchcraft and sorcery and stuff. He decides to hire a, a, a prophet. His name was Balaam. And he said, Balaam, you're going to have to try and curse these people because they are too powerful. We, there is no, we have no means of, of, of defeating these guys. And so uh, uh, what happens is, uh, is Balaam, is a, uh, he's a legit prophet, which means he's, he's able to hear God and hear from heaven and speaks what God's, God says. And so he stands up, he sees Israel coming. He stands up on the rock and he gets ready to, to prophesy and he's going to curse them. And so he takes four, four prophecies and he stands there out there and he's wanting to curse, curse Israel and nothing but blessing comes out blessing and multiplication and Balak's kind of standing there like yeah here we go <laughs> what are you doing do it again so he says it a, a, a second time he stands up there tries, tries to curse curse them and in his second prophecy he says these words he says I cannot curse what God has blessed I don't know about you, but uh, uh, we've been in instances, or uh, I know if some family's been in instances where they sat on a marae, and because they didn't speak the reo or whatever it is, they were, they were they give them curses. Through tikanga Māori, they're, 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 they're cursing them in, in te reo. But you cannot curse what God has blessed. That person was dead within a year. You cannot curse what God has blessed cannot principalities and powers have no place on you have no place on your home have no place in your life you're untouched but we cannot give him access points into our lives we need to be aware of his strategies and his wiles and his devices if we tolerate stuff for instance there's a little avenue he's able to get in and he'll keep hitting that I don't know about you. I like watching boxing, or um, I believe Mike Tyson's fighting today. Is he? Is he fighting today? Yeah, Mike Tyson's fighting today. Or, or even in the MMA, and when they strike a in an opponent and they hit a, a weak spot, that the fighter, if he's smart or if he's intelligent, will keep hitting it. This is his weak spot. This is his weak spot. I'm going to try and you know keep taking him down. The devil's the same. We cannot give him any weak spots cannot give him any place we cannot give him a, a foothold amen praise the lord let's pray thank you lord uh, can we just have the uh worship team back jesus Jesus, hallelujah, praise your name, praise your name, hallelujah, 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 just as we worship the Lord, praise God, if you're, uh, if you're battling something right now, could be anything, some people are, uh, we're at the end of the year now and, and people are tired, and you know what, uh, uh, we all get tired, And sometimes things can come on our, on our bodies. And it doesn't mean that you're a loser. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, you have to kind of fight this thing by yourself. This is what the church is for, is that we stand together and we, we lift each other up. And if you're here, if you're facing a, a, a battle of sorts... And I, I, I want to stand with you. I want to pray with you. Let's lift it together. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be a sickness of sorts, but if you're, if you're dealing with symptoms or anything like that, then let's pray. Let's get it sorted. Let's stop it at the steel stage. Praise the Lord. 
you're dealing with some other kind of issue in your life, might be family difficulties in that, God has the answer for you. Let's stop it at the steal stage. If it's keeping you up at night, it's stealing from you. Stealing your rest is stealing your peace. Today's the day where we take that peace back. In Jesus' name. And if you're in here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, my friend, you are on the wrong path. But there is a sacrifice that was paid for you 2,000 years ago. There is a power that was unleashed 2,000 years ago that was able to take you from the wrong path, heading in the wrong direction, and put you on the right one. He's able to take all the wrong things that you've done and put as far as the east is to the west. And He's able to bring you into His family and call you a son or daughter of the Most High God. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is all-encompassing. And one of the things He desires most in this world is people. Hallelujah. If that's you, if you want to respond, please don't hesitate. This is what church is. Praise the Lord.